This week we're going to be talking about from development to production, so how to go from working on experiments and poking around to making something useful for the long term. And today we're going to cover a bit about what that means and focus on specifically environment specification. So by development, I mean that experimental phase while you're figuring out what you're doing, working on your homework, writing prototypes, poking around. During this phase, it doesn't matter so much that everything's all clean and nice. You might be working in Python scripts or notebooks. The main thing is it works for you and you're rapidly iterating on what you have. And what I mean by production is that it's ready to run somewhere else, by someone else, or at some later point in time. And what does it mean to be ready for those things? It means you've got well-specified requirements. So when you've got a new computer or it's somebody else's computer or it's in the cloud or something, the requirements for your code are well-specified in a way that's going to work in a wide variety of contexts. It's tested so you can easily check, does it work? It's documented so people can look at it and see how it works. That may mean a different person who's never seen the code before, or, and you'll increasingly learn as you write more code over time, that other person can just as easily be you at some later point in time when you've forgotten all about how this worked in the past. And finally, from an organizational perspective, you'll often move from scripts and notebooks over to Python modules and packages that you can install and have dependencies and imports and things. So today, our focus is on environments. And there's lots of different kinds of environments, different ways to specify what you need. So in general, an environment is a way of specifying what software you need to run something. So if it's an application or a package or library or something, you specify, what do I need in order for this to work? That might be, I just need NumPy, or I need a specific version of Python, or I need a specific version of these packages. And there are various tools that focus on different use cases. So Conda is a package manager that's widely used in the scientific Python community, but it can specify environments involving Python itself and C libraries, scientific packages, things like that. There's the very lightweight requirements.txt that's supported by pip. So this is just a list of Python packages. Pip tools and pipenv are tools that we're going to talk about in a little bit more detail. And then finally, Docker files let you specify a complete Linux environment by just recording a bunch of steps that can be run anywhere. Using Docker files doesn't necessarily mean you're creating a reproducible environment because the same Docker file can produce a different environment over time, depending on how it's written, but it can specify extremely arbitrary things. All right, and now we're going to go into a bit more detail with some examples of pip tools and pipenv and how to use those to define your Python requirements, since that's what will be most useful for, for us. Okay, now we're going to take a little tour of a couple environments for Python packages. So Python has something called a virtual environment, or virtual env, which is provided in the standard library for recent versions of Python, and something called venv. So you can create an env with python-m venv, and then you give it a path. And here I specify clear to say, if there's already an environment there, throw it away before creating it. And then I run a command in the environment to say, make sure pip is up to date. And then I'm going to run the tree command to peek at what's inside. So what do we see? In the environment, there's a bin directory, like you have for executables. And in there, there's Python itself, which is a link to where my Python came from. And then there's also pip in there for installing packages in the environment. So if I run pip list to show me what packages I have in my current environment, you can see there's a great many packages. I've got hundreds of packages in my host environment. But if I want to switch to this virtual environment, what I do is I run source, and then I give it the path to the environment, and then the bin directory, and then the activate script. So here I run that command, and then I run pip list again and see what's different. After I run that, there's only two packages, pip itself and setup tools, which pip requires. So now I want to install some packages into that environment. So all those hundreds of packages that I had aren't available. So I could try to import them and they wouldn't work from inside the environment. At this point, I've activated the environment and every command that I run will be run inside that environment. If I look at this requirements.txt, for instance, for the plotting data example, I use Altair and Flask and Vega datasets. These are what might be my direct imports and they're just the names of packages. So this is a pip requirements file. You can specify versions, but you don't have to. So here I'm just saying any version of these will be fine, and I can install from that file with pip install dash r with that requirements file, and pip is going to look on PyPI, the Python package index, find all those packages and all their dependencies, and install the latest version that satisfies the requirements I've given it. It's going to install quite a few packages. And now if I run pip list again, I can see that I've got quite a few packages, more than just the three that I asked for, because those packages themselves have dependencies. So now when we're thinking long term, how do I make sure that my package keeps working, right? Because maybe an update to Altair will make a change so that my code doesn't work anymore. How do I make the environment more reproducible? And so your first thought might be, well, I take the version of Altair um, and all the packages that I use and say, just make sure that you always get the same version that I, that I got today. Should that make things better? 
Well, the answer is no, that's the worst thing you can do. Uh, it's called version pinning when you say specify exactly this version. The absolute worst thing you can do is specify a version of a package without specifying the version of all the packages. So pinning should be all or nothing. And to take for an example, something that happens all the time, people say like, I need pandas, the version that I got today, exactly that version. But then there's an update to Python and pandas ships an update to fix some build issue with the latest version of Python or the latest version of NumPy. You pandas, but you don't pin NumPy, then eventually NumPy is gonna make a release that breaks pandas. But since you haven't pinned NumPy, you're essentially guaranteeing that your environment's gonna break. You're saying pin down what I depend on, but don't pin down what those packages depend on. And that's the, the worst version of pinning. That's never a good thing to do. When you want to pin packages, you should pin everything you've got installed, including all the dependencies or nothing at all. Say, give me the latest version of everything. Those are the two things that are most likely to work. Doing it halfway is basically ensuring that things will not work as soon as possible. And pip has a command called pip freeze, which creates a valid requirements.txt output. That is basically take everything that's installed and use a pin version of that. So you can always take pip freeze and save that to requirements.txt and that should be a stable environment, at least for a given version of Python. But it can be a little tedious to manage that pip freeze output and what you actually require. So requirements.txt can be either a strict environment or your loose, you know, what you actually depend on. And pip tools is a collection of scripts around solving that problem. So pip tools is itself a Python package. And what it does is it separates requirements.txt into two files. There's requirements.in, which is kind of the human managed file that we started with. So now we've got a directory pip tools and requirements.in is the three line requirements file that we had before. But what pip compile does is it take that requirements.in file solve those dependencies, and then save this fully pinned output in requirements.txt so that when I'm running an application or something, it will install from requirements.txt, so it'll install that pinned environment. But then when I want to update those changes, what I do is I edit requirements.in and then run pip compile again. And today, when you're just starting out, there is no difference in what you're going to get between running pip install requirements.in and requirements.txt. There's no difference. You get the exact same thing. But where you get a distinction is that in a year from now, or a month from now, a week from now, requirements.in will start to install different new things. But requirements.txt will always install the same thing over time. And that way you have requirements.in that specifies what you need, and then you update requirements.txt explicitly so that you're not surprised when some dependency changes and breaks something. So this gives you kind of the best of both worlds. You have the only file that you actually edit personally has your direct dependencies. And then you have requirements.txt that has all the pin dependencies. And then you run pip compile to update those explicitly and automatically. So you always run pip compile to update this file. You'll never edit it by hand. Pipenv is another tool that solves really the same problem as pip tools, but at a slightly different level. The main differences are it uses something called a pip file which is a different file format. It creates a pip file.lock for the pinned version. So instead of requirements.in, requirements.txt, it uses these structured files. And it also does more than just Python packages. So pip compile is really just for managing your Python dependencies, but pip files let you specify things like the Python version itself, not just what packages to install, but where to install them from, that kind of thing. So if we change into the pip file example, we can look at our pip file, and this is equivalent to what we had. So this is a structured file in a format called TOML. So the packages we depend on, we depend on Altair and star means any version. So we have any version of Altair, Flask, and Vega datasets. But we can also have additional things. So there are additional sections like, should I get things from the standard Python package index or should I get them from my personal mirror or something like that? But here I'm specifying this should only work with Python 3.8. So if you're gonna run this application, run it with Python 3.8 if you have it available. And that way, when you know Python 3.9 comes out and pandas needs to be updated, but you've pinned pandas down along with everything else, this lets you say, if there's a newer Python version available, even if it's my default Python, when you're creating an environment for this application, make sure you create it with the right version of Python. So now if we can leave the environment we created to work with pip tools, the lock command is what reads this pip file and generates something called the pip file.lock, which is like the requirements.txt created from pip compile, but like the pip file itself, it's a structured thing that includes more information, includes hashes and, and things. And now when we run pip env install, in addition, unlike pip compile, pip env actually creates virtual envs based on your directory and everything. So when I run pip env install, instead of just running pip install in my current environment, it's actually creating an environment and installing in there, and it's installing only from the lock file. 
it's installing only the pinned versions. And then I can activate the environment. I can, if I do pip n shell, I'll get a shell with that environment activated, or I can run single commands with pip n run. So if I run pip n run, just show where the Python prefix is, that'll tell me where the env was created. And then I can run pip list to show me what packages were installed in that environment. And because I'm doing this all today, this is gonna be all the same results for all my versions. And finally, I can peek at that pip, pip file.lock and you can see this is a structured file. And you can see that we have the Altair package. This is the version. PyPI is where it came from. And that also includes hashes to say, you know, if this version changed, it will actually refuse to install, you know, somebody replaced that package with something that claimed to be the same version, but was actually a different file with different contents. It will verify that and make sure that, that you know that something changed, even if the version didn't change. And that's all for a quick tour of environments with specifically with Python. And next we'll talk about getting things ready for sharing with documentation.